Hello. Today we will start the fourth unit of our course with a discussion on capacitance. What does capacitance mean? Capacitance is analogous to capacity of a container. Capacitance of a conductor is similar to capacity of a container. Now, what is the capacity of this beaker? Now, each of these beakers have different capacities. Now, how can you define capacity of a container? Now, I can define it like this. How much fluid or how much liquid can be poured into it to increase the height by one meter? That can be a measure of the capacity of a container. Now, if that is the case, how would you define the capacitance of a conductor like this? This is a conductor. Now, what will you put into this conductor? Electric charges. When you charge this conductor or when you give charges to this conductor, what happens to its potential? Its potential will increase. So the amount of liquid in a container is analogous to the amount of charge on a conductor. The increase in height of the liquid in the container is analogous to the increase in potential. So we can use that concept to define the capacitance of a conductor. So as a conductor gets charged, its potential increases. Now how do you define capacitance of a conductor? The amount of charge given to a conductor to increase its potential by one volt is a measure of the capacitance of that conductor. In the same way, we define the capacity of a container. The amount of liquid needed to raise the height by one meter. Similarly, the amount of charge given to a conductor to increase its potential by one volt is a measure of the capacitance of a conductor. Now, we measure, we represent capacitance by the uppercase C. So note that, the uppercase C. Do not confuse it with the uppercase C we use for columns, for charge. Well, that is a unit. This is the term capacitance. Now, since capacitance is charge per unit volt, is that right? The amount of charge needed to increase the potential by one volt, what will be the unit of capacitance? You can tell me. What will, you, will be the unit of capacitance? It will be charge per unit potential difference, or it will be column per volt. So, C equal to Q over V. That's the way we can define capacitance. Capacitance is charge per unit volt, and therefore, what is its unit? It is measured in column per volt. Column per volt, and it has a name. Column per volt is called a farad. You must remember that. The unit of capacitance is a farad and it is columns per volt. Now, farad is a very big unit. It is very difficult to obtain a capacitance such as one farad. And therefore, we will divide that into smaller units like microfarad, 10 to the negative 6 of a farad, nanofarad, 10 to the negative 9 of a farad, picofarad, 10 to the negative 12 of a farad, and so on. Most often, these are the two we will be using, microfarad and nanofarad. Well, the potential of a spherical conductor of radius r that carries a charge q, 
Do you remember if you have a spherical conductor and give that spherical conductor a charge Q? Bring back my basketball. If I give this spherical conductor a charge Q, what will be the potential of that conductor? We did that uh, some time ago. What is the potential of a spherical conductor that carries a charge Q? Well, it is V equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R. Is that right? Now, therefore, capacitance of a spherical conductor can be written as, what is the equation for capacitance? Capacitance is columns per volt, the amount of charge per unit potential difference. So, it can therefore be written as Q divided by, now the potential is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R. Now, can you simplify this? When you divide it by a fraction, you invert and multiply, and Q and Q will go, and that gives me the capacitance of a spherical conductor is 4 pi epsilon naught R. See, one important thing I would like you to notice here, that capacitance of a conductor the capacitance of a conductor does not depend on the amount of charge given to it. Why? Because more is the amount of charge, more will be the potential. Well, capacitance is a measure of the amount of charge to raise the potential by one volt. So, the capacitance of a conductor does not depend on the amount of charge. What does it depend on then? It depends only on its physical properties. For a conductor like this, the capacitance only depends on the radius. Now, in the same way, the capacity of a beaker, does the capacity of a beaker depend on the amount of fluid you put in it? No. The capacity of the beaker depends only on its physical dimensions, like its height and its base area and so on. In the same way, the capacitance of a conductor, a spherical conductor like this, depends only on the physical dimensions. It depends only on the radius of the spherical conductor, a very important concept. Let's now talk about what a capacitor is. Now, consider a conductor carrying a charge Q so that its potential is V volts. Now, here I have a conductor that carries a charge Q so that its potential is increased to V. Whenever you give a conductor a certain amount of charge, its potential increases. So here I have a conductor that is given an amount of charge Q so that its potential is V volts. What is the capacitance? Capacitance is equal to Q over V. Now the question is, is there any way we can increase the capacitance of that conductor? That is what we're going to see here in this segment. Now, the capacitance of the conductor is C equal to Q over V. Now, watch this carefully, listen to this carefully, and tell me what happens here. Bring a neutral conductor near the charged conductor. Bring a neutral conductor and keep it near the charged conductor. Here it is. Now, this is a neutral conductor. Now, what happened inside the neutral conductor? You are familiar with the term polarization, is that right? So, when a neutral conductor is brought near a charged conductor, polarization of charges happens inside the neutral conductor, which means the negative charges inside the neutral conductor come closer to the positively charged object leaving the other end positively charged. Now, what is the effect of this? Now, remember, 
a negatively charged object has a negative potential and a positively charged object has a positive potential. A negative potential is negative. Is that right? The, the potential due to a negative charge is negative. And the potential due to a positive charge is positive. So, this charged object, watch this carefully, has now a potential V before we brought the neutral conductor. Now, this neutral conductor, as a result of the polarization, has produced a certain amount of negative charges very close to this charged object. That means it has now produced a negative potential at where the charged object is. Now, what does that negative potential do to the potential of this charged object? It reduces the potential. The presence of, listen to this again carefully, the presence of these negative charges close to the positively charged object reduces the potential, reduces the positive potential V of the charged object. Now, come here and tell me, capacitance is Q over V. What happens when V becomes less? When V becomes less, the value of C increases. When the denominator is become less, the value of the fraction becomes greater. So when the potential is reduced, the capacitance of the conductor increases. What does that mean? It means it can now take in more positive charges so that its potential now becomes the original value V. In order that its potential may, may become the original value V, it can now take in a lot more charges. The capacitance or the ability to contain charges is now more. Okay, now you can see these positive charges will also produce a positive potential at this charged object increasing its potential but the influence of these positive charges are not as much as the influence of these negative charges so the effect of the negative charges are felt more at the charged object than these positive charges so the net effect is a decrease in potential now tell me is there any way we can get rid of these positive charges from this part of the neutral conductor. From your understanding, is there any way to get rid of these positive charges from this end of the neutral conductor? Yes, but all I need to do is I only need to touch that end, in other words, ground it so that negative charges from the ground will flow and neutralize those positive charges. So the negative charges in the neutral conductor move so that they reside closer to the positively charged conductor, making the other end positively charged. The accumulation of these negative charges near the positively charged object lowers its potential to V prime. So the new potential is no longer V, but V prime, so that V prime is less than the original potential V. Now, this decrease in potential of the charged conductor, without changing the amount of charge on it, causes an increase in the capacitance of the conductor. That means, in order to increase the potential back to the original value V, more positive charges need to be given to the conductor. And that is why we say the capacitance increases. Thus, the presence of a neutral conductor near the charged conductor raises the capacitance of the charged conductor. So, if I have a charged conductor here, this is the charged conductor, in order to increase its capacitance, what do I need to do? 
bring a neutral conductor and place it near it. The presence of that neutral conductor will increase the capacitance of this conductor. Now, you understand why it happens. Well, let's now see how else we can reduce the capacitance further. Now, what happens if the neutral conductor is now grounded? Now, what happens when you ground this neutral conductor? Tell me. There you are. If you now ground the neutral conductor, what will be the next step? Electrons will move from the earth in here, neutralizing all those positive charges. That means all the positive charges there have gone. That means the presence of these negative charges or the influence of these negative charges are now felt even more. The negative charges from the ground flows to the neutral conductor, neutralizing the positive charges. This leaves the neutral conductor now, you can see the neutral conductor now is a negatively charged object. So what you have now is near our positively charged conductor, we have a negatively charged conductor. Now, this lowers the positive potential of the charged conductor even further. That means raises the capacitance again. So, if I ask you, how will you increase the capacitance of a conductor? Now, what would be your answer? Your answer will be, in order to increase the capacitance of this conductor, what you need to do is bring a neutral conductor near it and connect the neutral conductor to the ground. Or we can say bring a grounded neutral conductor near the charged conductor that will increase the capacitance of the charged conductor. Okay. The capacitance of the charged conductor can further, we can do something more to increase the capacitance. And what is that? You see, uh, watch again, listen carefully. The electric influences, this is a negative, these are negative charges. The influence of these negative charges are conveyed to this conductor through this intervening medium. If you can make that intervening medium more effective in communicating electrical influences, then the effect of the negative charges will be felt even more at the positively charged conductor. That means the capacitance of a charged conductor can be further increased by separating the two conductors by a proper dielectric. Now, you see a dielectric is actually an insulator. Air. This, at the moment we have air between the two conductors. Air is a dielectric. But there are much more effective dielectric that we can use. Instead of using air, for example, if you use paper in between the two conductors, paper is a good dielectric. That will make the that will make the electrical influences to pass through much more readily. That means that will still further reduce the potential and hence increase the capacitance of the charge conductor. So here I have now a dielectric. Now such an arrangement is called a capacitor. So if I ask you to give me a definition of a capacitor, what will that definition be? I can say a capacitor is an arrangement of a conductor. And what else is there? When you have a conductor which is now separated from a grounded earthed conductor and the two conductors are separated by means of a suitable dielectric medium and that is a capacitor. So let's define the capacitor. Here I have defined it for you. 
A capacitor is an arrangement of two conductors separated by a thin dielectric and one of them is kept grounded. That is the definition of a capacitor. Now tell me, what do you use a capacitor for? Well, if you follow the discussion so far, a capacitor, we have, we have been experimenting with how to increase the capacitance or the ability of a conductor to hold charges. That means a capacitor is a device for storing electrical charges. Is that right? So we store electrical charges and when you want them, we can take them and use them. All right. Have you ever seen a capacitor being used? Now, when you use a photographic flash, for example, when you turn it on, have you heard that little sound? Now, that sound is electric charges being drawn from the battery to a capacitor. So, a capacitor inside the flash is charging. That means electric charges are being stored in the capacitor. And when you press the camera, the flash comes on. Why? The capacitor now discharges. The capacitor allows all those stored charges to flow through the filament of the bulb very fast, very quickly, producing a very large current and a very bright light for a short period. You see, capacitance are very, very useful now. The symbol of a capacitor, a capacitor is this. Don't confuse this with the symbol of an electric cell I gave you in the last class. Or I will give it to you shortly. An electric cell looks the same, but one of them is shorter than the other. I'll talk about that later. So the symbol of a capacitor, two parallel lines, with the connecting leads connected is a capacitor. Now let's look at a particular type of a capacitor which is the parallel plate capacitor. Now what do you think a parallel plate capacitor is? A parallel plate capacitor is a capacitor where both the conductors are metal plates that are parallel to each other. Now here I have a parallel plate capacitor and the two plates are separated by a proper dielectric. In fact, this is a parallel plate capacitor. In a parallel plate capacitor, the two conductors are metal plates separated by a dielectric. So both these conductors are metal plates, they are both good conductors separated by a proper dielectric. Now, watch this again. A dielectric is characterized by a dielectric constant and is represented by the Greek letter kappa. Now, it looks like K, but it's kappa. All right? So the dielectric constant is represented by the Greek letter kappa and the kappa has a value of 1 for vacuum and for any other material, any other insulating material, it has a value greater than 1. For all practical purposes, we will use kappa equal to 1 for air. So, if I give you a problem where there is no dielectric mentioned, you must understand that the dielectric is air and the value of kappa is 1. Now, I'm going to give you a table which lists the values of kappa for some common materials. Now, have a look at this table, at this table and keep some of these values that may be useful to you. Now, air 1.0006 and we said for all practical purposes, we will take it as 1. Now, Bakelite is 4.9, Mica is 5.4, Paper is a good dielectric, its dielectric constant is 3.7, Pyrex Glass 
5.6 and water is a very good dielectric but it is not a very practical one for constructing capacitors so we will not be using that we will most often be using paper, mica, bakelite and so on for constructing capacitances All right. what are the factors on which the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor depend on. Can you think of some of the factors on which the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor depend on? Well, by now you must know that capacitance of a capacitor depends only on the physical properties. So you have a parallel plate capacitor what do you think are the factors that affect the capacitance of a capacitor like this? What are the physical properties that can be altered? Well, let's talk about some of them. Now, one aspect is the area. You increase the area, more charges can be stored. So the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor depends on the area A of the plates. So capacitance is directly proportional to the area of the plates. Now here I have a parallel plate capacitor. You can see the two plates separated by a dielectric. At the moment the dielectric is air. And when you connect this capacitor to a battery, what happens? Electric charges will flow from the battery to the capacitor plate so that the capacitor gets charged. You see the process of allowing electric charges to flow into the plates of the capacitor is called charging a capacitor. Here, connecting this parallel plate capacitor to the poles of a cell. This is the negative pole of the cell and that is the positive pole. You can see this plate get positively charged and the other gets negatively charged. The capacitor gets charged and the amount of charge that can be stored on a parallel plate capacitor is directly proportional to the area of the plate. A stands for the area. Well, what else does it depend on? It depends on the plate separation. Well, you see, if the plates are widely separated, the influence of the negative charges will not be communicated effectively to the other. That means you separate it more, the capacitance is going to decrease. So to make the capacitance more, you must make the plate separation as small as possible. How would you say that mathematically? We say the separation D, the capacitance of a capacitor, is inversely proportional to the separation D. Now decrease the separation so that the capacitance increases. There is one more factor on which the capacitance of a capacitor depend on. What is that? It is the dielectric constant, the kappa, of the dielectric separating the two plates. Use a proper dielectric between the two plates of high uh, dielectric constant that will increase the capacitance. So the three quantities that will affect the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor are area of the plate, the plate separation and dielectric constant kappa. Can you write a mathematical equation showing all these? Capacitance is directly proportional to A, inversely proportional to the plate separation D, and of course, kappa is a constant, and as kappa increases, that the capacitance also increases. All right, we can write it like this. C equal to kappa epsilon naught A over D, where epsilon naught is the constant of proportionality. 
whenever you have a proportional or uh, proportionality the proportionality can be replaced by an equal sign adding a constant so I have replaced the proportion by an equal adding a constant and look what is that constant that constant is our friend we know that if not not is the permittivity of free space how good is a space in permitting electrical influences to pass through kappa is the dielectric constant a is the area of the plate and d is the plate separation watch this again capacitance is directly proportional to the area it is inversely proportional to the plate separation it is directly proportional to the dielectric constant and when you replace the proportional sign by an equal sign add a constant epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space and you know its value we have been using that in many instances all right its value is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 now look at the unit there farad per meter let's do a problem an isolated spherical conductor of radius 10 centimeter is charged to 2 kilovolt. What is the capacitance of the sphere? What is the charge on the sphere? How does the capacitance change if the sphere is charged to 6 kilovolt? I would like you to answer the last part, C, first. Can you answer that C for me? How does the capacitance change if the potential is increased? The potential is 6 kilovolt instead of the 2 kilovolt. If you increase the potential, how does the capacitance get affected? Well, I know you will get confused here. Now remember, we told you capacitance of a capacitor does not depend on the amount of charge you put in it. You see, more amount of charge you put in, the potential will increase further. Now, the value of Q over V remains a constant, and that is the capacitance. So, the amount of charge will not affect the capacitance. The amount of potential will not affect the capacitance. Capacitance is affected only by its physical properties. All right, let's uh, do a part. What is the capacitance of the conductor? What is the formula for capacitance of a spherical conductor that we did some time ago? Capacitance of a spherical conductor is 4 pi epsilon naught r, and we have all those values 4 pi epsilon naught radius is 10 centimeter 0.1 meter so the capacitance of that spherical capacitor is 1.1 times 10 to the 11 farad that is 11 pico farad oh i should have uh, what is the mistake here that must be 10 to the negative 11 so make, please make that change it is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 11 which is the same as 11 times 10 to the negative 12, or that is 11 picofarad. So please make that change in your, in your notes. What's the B part? What is the charge on the sphere? What is the charge on the sphere? Capacitance, the general form of capacitance is charge per unit volt, Q over V. So, can you solve for Q from here? If C equal to Q over V, then Q equal to C times V. We know the capacitance, we know the voltage, therefore, capacitance multiplied by the voltage is now 2.2 times 10 to the negative 8 column. Can you write this in nano column? Now, 2.2 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs is how many nanocoulombs? It will be 22 nanocoulombs. Okay, 
Now, did we answer the part C? What's the answer to part C? How does the capacitance change if the sphere is now charged to 6 kilovolt? That means you put more charges on the conductor so that its potential increases to 6 kilovolt. Are you increasing or decreasing the capacitance? No. The capacitance is not affected by increasing the amount of charge or increasing the potential. All right? We talked about that. So the ratio Q over V will remain a constant. In order to increase the potential, you need to increase the amount of charge. Therefore, that doesn't change the capacitance. Let's do another one. If a parallel plate capacitor has 0.15 millimeter separation, that is the plate separation, what must its area be for it to have a capacitance of 1 farad? You know that 1 farad is a great big value of capacitance. What must be the area of a parallel plate capacitor for it to have a capacitance of 1 farad? If the plates are square, what is the length of their sides? Well, what all we need uh, here is the formula for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. In a problem like this, if a dielectric is not mentioned, I told you we will assume that the dielectric is air and the value of kappa is 1. So, you got the capacitance is 1 farad, epsilon naught we know, the plate separation is given to us 0.5 millimeter, write that in meters, very important. So that is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4 meter and kappa equal to 1. Alright, can you write down the equation for capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? There you are. C equal to kappa epsilon naught A over D. We know all these quantities except A. Can you solve for A? A equal to CD divided by kappa epsilon naught. And now plug in the values, all those values, C equal to 1. D is 1.5 times 10 to the 4 meter. And kappa is 1. And epsilon naught is this value. Therefore, that area is 1.69 times 10 to the 7 meters squared. That will be a great big metal plate of that area. Isn't that right? Well, it's almost as big as two football fields. Is that right? Well, think about that. Okay. If the plates are square, what is the length of their sides? In other words, if they are square, length multiplied by length equal to this. So we got the area, we need to find the length. If L is the length, then area must be equal to L squared. So to find the length, what all we need to do is take the square root of the area. That will be square root of 1.69 times 10 to the 7. What's that equal to? 4.11 times 10 to the 3 meter. Can you tell me how many football fields are this? That is f almost 4 kilometer long and 4 kilometer wide. Well, it's almost the size of a small city. In order to create a parallel plate capacitor of capacitance 1 farad, you need a plate as large as Port Charlotte or Fort Myers. Very large plate. You can see how big a capacitance is 1 farad. Alright, let's do another problem. A parallel plate capacitor has a capacitance of 2 microfarad and a plate separation of 1.6 millimeter. What is the maximum potential difference between the plates such that dielectric breakdown of air between the plates does not occur? Tell me, what is the electric field 
What is the electric field that will produce dielectric breakdown between the two plates? What will be the electric field that will make the air a conductor? We did that, we used that very many times. It is 3 times 10 to the 6 volts per meter. Alright, let's start with the first part. You know the capacitance is given to us 2 times 10 to the 6 Farad. Epsilon naught we know. The plate separation we know. Alright. Now, kappa we know. For dielectric breakdown to occur, the electric field between the two plates. You see, the plates are separated like this. And if the air between is to become a conductor, that means the dielectric breakdown needs to occur. The electric field in between has to be at least this value. Now, Will that help you to calculate what will be the potential difference between the plates when the electric field is that value? Do you remember the relation between potential difference between the two conductors, the electric field between them, and the separation of the two conductors? Well, you need to remember that. If this is the case, we've got the two conductors and the electric field between them, the maximum value is 3 times 10 to the 6 dx. The, the separation is 1.6 millimeter. Do you recall this? The electric field is delta V divided by delta x. The potential difference divided by the separation. Now, therefore, what will be the potential difference? We want the potential difference. We can therefore say V equal to E times D. And E is 3 times 10 to the 6. D is 1.6 millimeter. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 meter. And that is 4,800 volt. So, in order that dielectric breakdown may happen in the air that separates the two, the potential difference between the two plates should be as high as 4,800 volt. Alright? What is the maximum potential difference between the plates such that dielectric breakdown will happen? This is the maximum potential difference. If the potential difference increases further, the air will not be a dielectric anymore. It will break down and will become a conductor. All right, what's the B part? How much charge is stored at this maximum potential difference? Well, you know C equal to Q over V. Capacitance is charge per unit volt. And therefore, what is Q equal to? Q equal to C times V. We know the value of capacitance. You know the maximum potential difference we just calculated. So what is Q equal to? equal to C times V that is 0 0.0096 coulombs so if you place that much of charge on the capacitor plates then the dielectric will break down and the air will become a conductor that's what it means C part what is the charge density on the plates you understand the meaning of charge density charge density is charge per unit area now this charge is distributed in what area well we don't need that we can now go to this equation if you remember the electric field between two parallel conductors it's a very important equation we will be using it very often we have used it very often in the past the electric field between two parallel conductors is sigma over epsilon naught, where sigma is the surface charge density. Therefore, what is sigma? Sigma is E times epsilon naught, and you know E 3 times 10 to the 6, epsilon naught we know, that is therefore 2.66 times 10 to the 5 coulombs per meter squared. You must be familiar with all these formulae 
in order to solve problems. All right, so keep them all in an organized way. When you want to use them, you know where to look for them. Let's now talk about energy of a charged capacitor. When you charge a capacitor, remember, in order to charge a capacitor, you do work. And the amount of work you do to bring electric charges to the capacitor is stored as energy. A capacitor that is charged has energy. In order to charge a conductor, work needs to be done. And this work done in charging a capacitor is stored in it as energy. Well, so we will obtain an equation for the energy of a charged capacitor. Let Q be the amount of charge on a conductor of capacitance C. Here I have a conductor that has a capacitance C. And there is an amount of charge Q on it so that its potential is raised to V volt. Now tell me, does the capacitance depend on the amount of charge? No. The amount of charge will determine the potential difference. The charge divided by the potential difference will be a constant, which is the capacitance. All right. Now, then the potential of the conductor, uh, what is the potential V when you have given a charge Q to a conductor of capacitance C? V will be equal to Q over C. I hope uh, this formula is familiar. That comes from that comes from our original definition of capacitance. Look at this. Capacitance is Q over V, charge per unit volt. And therefore, solving for V, you get V equal to Q over C. You must be able to solve and express this equation in any convenient form. If C equal to Q over V, then V equal to Q over C. That's what we have done there. All right? Now, if you want to transfer an additional charge DQ, you need to do an amount of work. How much work? Now, remember potential. Do you remember the meaning of potential? Well, you need to know that. Potential is a measure of work done per unit charge. This is a measure of work done per unit charge. And so, if you now move a charge DQ, how much will be the work done? It will be the work done per unit charge multiplied by DQ. So, the work done DW will be V DQ. So, the more is the amount of charge on the conductor, in order to move further amount of charge, you've got to do more work. All right. So if you want to now move a small amount of charge DQ, you need to do an amount of work V DQ. Now, you can see our V is Q over C. And I can simplify that, and I'm going to give you now an equation for the energy. In order to transfer a total amount of charge Q to a capacitor, the amount of work done can be shown to be equal to Q equal to one half C V squared. Now, I haven't gone through the derivation of the equation, but I want you to learn that equation. The work done to charge a capacitor, W equal to one half C V squared, where C is the capacitance and V is the voltage. Now, this is the energy of the charged capacitor. The amount of work done to charge the capacitor is a measure of its energy. If a capacitor is charged to a voltage V, the energy stored in it. So, what will be the equation for the stored energy in a capacitor? E equal to one half a C V squared. Now, if you want to write it in many other forms, for example, V is Q over C. 
So look at the way I'm going to write that. I'm going to write v, v squared as q squared over c squared. And then this will become 1 half c v squared will become q squared over 2c. Both these are the same thing. The energy of a charge capacitor is 1 half c v squared, which is the same as q squared over 2c. Let's do a problem. Half the charge is removed from a capacitor without changing its capacitance. Now remember, in order to change the capacitance, you need to change the physical properties. Now, what fraction of the stored energy is removed along with the charge? You understand the question? Let's try to do that. Consider a capacitor of capacitance C carrying a charge Q. Tell me, what is the energy stored in that capacitor? We got C and Q. If E1 is the energy of this capacitor, then that E1 will be Q squared over 2C. Is that right? Q is the amount of charge on it, and C is the capacitance. Remember, C is a constant. C doesn't change. All right. Now, what is that? The capacitance C of a capacitor is a constant. What are we doing now? We're going to remove half of the amount of charge. Now, the capacitance doesn't depend on the amount of charge. So if you remove a half of the amount of charge, that is not going to affect the capacitance of the capacitor. So, when half the charge is removed, the remaining charge is Q over 2. So, if I want to now find the energy stored after removing half of the charge, what well, all I need to do is, I'll replace this Q by Q over 2. That will give me an expression for the energy after half the amount of charge is removed. So this is our initial energy, E1 equal to Q squared over 2C carry this along with us, we go to the next slide. If E2 is the energy after removing half the charge, then what is E2 equal to? Look what I've done. I have replaced Q by Q over 2. Can you simplify this? This will be Q squared over 4, or this will now become Q squared over 8C. I hope the algebra is understandable. Now, can I write it as 1 fourth times Q squared over 2C? Why did I write that? Because Q squared over 2C is the energy before the half the amount is, is removed. This is the original energy E1. Therefore, that tells me E2 is 1 fourth of E1. So, if E1 is the original energy, after half the amount of charge is removed, the energy left in the capacitor is only one quarter of E1. And we need to find how much is the energy removed. Therefore, the energy removed is E1 minus E2, which is E1 minus E2 is one fourth of E1. And that is three quarters of E1. You see, when half the amount of charge is removed, what happened? Three quarters of the stored energy was lost. Okay, let's do another problem. A parallel plate capacitor with a plate area of two meters squared and a separation of one millimeter is charged to 100 volt. Now learn to pick the data. What is the electric field between the plates? Well, you know that when you, the electric field between the plates is related to the potential difference and the plate separation. Is that right? Yes. The potential difference is, well, I hope you rem remember the formula connecting the electric field potential difference and plate separation. Let's do that. The area equal to 2 meters squared 
D, the separation between the plates is 1 millimeter, 10 to the power of negative 3 meter. And the voltage is, is being charged to 100 volt. So in A, the electric field between the plates, anybody give me the equation? E equal to V over D. Delta V divided by delta X. Potential difference divided by the plate separation. We know V is 100 volt. D is 10 to the negative 3 meter. Therefore, the electric field is 10 to the power of 5 volt per meter. What is a B? What is the charge on the capacitor plates? Well, first we obtain the capacitance C because we need the value of the capacitance to obtain the amount of charge. How do we obtain the capacitance? This is a parallel plate capacitor that has an area A, the plate separation is known, the dielectric constant we don't know, we will take it as 1. Can you give me the equation for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? Well, there it is. C equal to kappa epsilon naught A over D. We have all these values. Now, that gives us the capacitance is 1.77 times 10 to the negative 8 Farad. Alright, now you have the capacitance. You have the voltage. Can you use the values of capacitance and voltage to find the amount of charge? Q equal to CV, is that right? From our basic definition of capacitance, C equal to Q over V, or Q equal to CV. The capacitance is the one we just calculated. Potential difference is 100 volts. Therefore, Q equal to 1.77 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Find the energy stored in the capacitor. Well, if you know the capacitance, we know the capacitance and the voltage, you know the energy is one half C V squared. E equal to one half C V squared. You can use any of the equations. This is more convenient here. One half times the capacitance, we just calculated. V is 100 volts, and that is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 5 joules is the amount of energy stored in that capacitor. All right, let's do one more problem. A parallel plate air gap capacitor, air gap capacitor means kappa equal to 1, has a capacitance of 0.14 microfarad. The plates are 0.5 millimeter apart. The plate separation. What is the area of each plate? Let's do that first. We know capacitance, we know the plate separation, we know the amount of charge, we know kappa. Tell me what is the equation for the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? We have capacitance, we have kappa, we have epsilon naught, we have D, we can solve for A. Can you solve this equation for A? A will be equal to CD divided by kappa epsilon naught. And now place all the values there. Alright, place the values of all those. We get area is 7.91 meters squared. What's the next one? What is the potential difference if the capacitor is charged to 3.2 microcoulomb? If Q equal to 3.2 microcoulomb, what is the potential difference? If you know the amount of charge and the capacitance, can you find V? V equal to Q over C. You see, direct application of the equation. Q is 3.2 microcoulomb, use that in coulombs. Capacitance is 1.4 times 10 to the negative 7. That is 0.14 microfarad. And that is 22.9 volt. Alright, what is C? What is the stored energy? 
You see, you have the value of the capacitance, you have the value of V, stored energy is one half C V squared. Alright, putting all those values there, one half times C times V squared, that is 3.67 times 10 to the negative 5 joules. And finally, how much charge can the capacitor carry before dielectric breakdown happens? Now the dielectric field between the capacitors, the electric field between the capacitance plates, we are now familiar with it, is sigma over epsilon naught. The electric field between the plates is sigma over epsilon naught. Therefore, sigma is E epsilon naught. Alright, let's find the value of sigma. For a dielectric breakdown, what must be the value of E? 3 times 10 to the power of 6. That's right. So use that value there to find sigma. Sigma is E times epsilon naught, and that is 2.655 times 10 to the negative 5 coulombs per meter squared. Alright. If sigma is known, how do you find the total charge on the capacitor plates? Sigma is the charge per unit area. Multiply sigma by the plate area, which we know, is this is the plate area. So the total charge on the capacitor plates will be area multiplied by sigma. And that will be area is 7.91 meters squared. That is sigma. That will be 2.1 times 10 to the negative 4 coulombs is the amount of charge on the capacitor place. Well, I think the